What is a trait that 99 out of 99 successful people have that makes them constantly progress, reach new milestones and goals? It's being coachable. Athletes like MJ and Kobe, entrepreneurs like Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg, and even ancient Greek philosophers like Aristotle, Socrates and Plato all had to put their huge egos aside and learn how to be coachable to succeed. And yes, a huge part of that success is attributed to talent, intelligence and hard work. But if there was no Phil Jackson, there would be no MJ. If there was no Steve Jobs, there would be no meta as we know it today and if there was no Socrates there would be no Aristotle or Plato. These mentors instilled their ideas and principles into these students then these students achieved greatness changed the game and got mentees of their own and that's how we get better as a society that's the cycle by standing on the shoulders of giants before us but for that we need to lower our ego and be open to learning so if you want to progress you need to be teachable and today we'll talk about how you can do that with one simple step. Some of you may know some don't but when I was younger I used to play basketball and I didn't get along with my teammates coaches and staff anybody really one thing went in my favor though I was the hardest worker out of anybody I know did that really make a difference in terms of basketball did that really matter no but I was just a fired up kid with an unbreakable mindset trying to power through everything he sees However, I started to work out with this coach over the summer to like help me improve my skills and whatnot. And he was this hard ass guy that actually practiced what he preached. So just like me, he watched film, he taught me new moves, he listened to the same music as I did and he actually worked out. That was when I discovered that I wasn't an uncoachable person. It was just a matter of me choosing my own authority, me choosing who's going to train me. Uh, and I chose that coach. He wasn't like pushed down my throat by the team or whatever. These other team coaches did not align with my values, were not people who I thought that they should teach somebody basketball because of the way they look, because of the way they spoke, because of their habits and whatever. But I chose not to give them their respect. And that summer of 2019 is when I went all in because I finally had someone I could trust, someone I could let go. And once you get a coach that you trust, once you get an authority of a person you trust, just let go, listen to them. I recently enrolled in a coaching program and to be honest, I don't know how to feel about it, but I decided to not feel anything. You have to let people do their own thing. Let people show you their own ways of how they did something that you want to achieve. Like don't mess with people's work and their ways of doing things. You made a conscious decision to trust them. Now shut the fuck up and do as they say. I mean, it'll suck at first, but for me right now it sucks, but you're not here to think. That's why you have a coach, somebody that teaches you and that's why you work with them because you trust them. You made a conscious decision to trust them. Your mentor, coach, teacher, call them whatever you want, uh, went through all the problems you went in the past or will go through in the future, a month from now, a year from now, 10 years from now, let him do his thing and do your part. So the main enemy in learning and listening to somebody is our ego. We're wired by everything in today's world to look for instant gratification. So after two days of doing the work and we get no results, we say that we tried it and it didn't work, but that's our ego actually talking. Our inner ego is saying, oh, this doesn't work because I didn't get, I don't know, results in 45 minutes of doing this boring thing. To be teachable is to delete your ego, to banish your ego for good. And as far as I know, there are like five ways in which you can do that and we'll go over them today. So let's hop in. The first is having a beginner's mindset and you can be LeBron James or you can go out and play high school basketball, but you're never too good for the basics. And this way of thinking is more of an approach to things rather than like a task you need to do. I was actually reminded for this by one of the purple belts at the place where I train BJJ at. It was near the end of the training session and we were sparring for the last three minutes. I'm a white belt and if you ever trained a combat sport, you know how it feels to be like manhandled by someone that's just levels above you. If you know, you know. If you don't, it feels hopeless, but they do it like gentlemen. Uh, so you basically get your ass whooped nicely. So we were just rolling and rolling and he submitted me almost every time so effortlessly. His moves were so clean and swift. So I jokingly told him, uh, it must be boring for you to spar with bite belts all the time. Haha. <laughs> and I didn't get the answer I quite expected. He looked me in the eyes and said, no. 
I come to these sessions to try out new things on you guys, then I implement them later. White or black belt, I learn either way. His point was valid and he was good because he never got out of that beginner's mindset of always trying new things out and always experimenting. I saw that even when he got into a sticky situation with a stronger heavier white belt because he was trying out something new, he had no ego about it. And that's how you learn by having humility and a beginner's mindset all the damn time. Take away from this, listen to your local purple belt jiu jitsu guys. Uh, but really always try and have a beginner's mindset. The second way is to figure out your flaws and become aware of them. Ask yourself, what are you bad at? For me, it's design. I'm not good at it, but I still have to do it. So I just accept that I suck ass at it. And I actually leverage that to make my designs look unique. These are some designs that I make for my newsletters. Okay, you can tell me they're bad, but you can't tell me they aren't unique. I make them fast and they're cool to me. So I don't really care how they look to other people because somebody that's interested in reading my newsletter and is coming to my website doesn't care about how my designs look. They care about how my newsletters make them feel and what I can do for them in my newsletters. So if there wasn't for me noticing my flaws, my ego would make me go into a three month mentorship for design so I can make a perfectly attention gathering, aesthetically pleasing design for my newsletters. That's by the way, not that important at all. But my modest self is turning that weakness of not knowing how to design anything into a unique asset. The third way to banish your ego is to focus on the process. And whoa, another dude telling me to focus on the journey, not the destination. What a fucking invention. But uh, it's cringe, uh, but it's also really, really correct once you start doing things. So over the past year, I've noticed that a lot of these cliche things from movies and books are just true. The magic really is in the journey. The magic is in the struggle. It's actually in the struggle of the journey. And it's what you'll learn along the way, the experiences and the unknown that come with pursuing what you really want in life. And trust me, I'm not someone who romanticizes pain and suffering. But once you really think of it, what is the end goal? The end goal doesn't exist. The end goal is a moving part. Its existence is so fragile. For example, once I started doing online business, I just wanted to make more money. And three years in, I want to change people's lives, build cool brands, communities, overturn fucking governments because I don't see enough value in just making money and traveling for my whole life. It's just not fucking enough. It's natural for us humans to want more always. And I really don't see a problem of wanting more if you respect what you already have. And this one is pretty personal. So you have to understand my point of view because I've grown up in a culture where you should be quiet, sit down, be scarce, uh, be grateful for what you already have. But in, in like a scarce way, because war might break out tomorrow. And I'm like, screw that. I'm not going to be a collateral damage of my society. So I always focus on what's in front of me right now and the next step in my my journey and where I land, I really can't control. The fourth one is to keep your ambitions to yourself. And this syndrome happened to you probably and to me all the time. We get an idea, we become excited, we plan it out, we go out and tell our friends and other people our awesome plan, and then we end up never doing it. It's scientifically proven that if we tell people our plans before taking action, we are less likely to take action afterwards. And Andrew Huberman, a literal scientist talked about this on his podcast. And he says that if we tell our friends, we're going to make this whole body transformation, change our lifestyle, make it a fitness thing that we activate systems in our brain that release a hormone called dopamine. It's a hormone that we have inside of us that gives us motivation. But the data tells us that that motivation disappears quickly after that. And then we're less likely to do the things that we told everybody we're going to do. So it's literal science that supports the old talk to talk but not walk the walk syndrome that we all had sometimes in our lives and probably will have because we're not perfect. The fifth and the final one is doing the work is enough. And this is simple, but you really have to get it. So hear me out. Doing what you can is enough. For me, life is about doing your part and not stressing about the outcome because you really can't control it. For example, you can be as nice as you can to a cashier in a coffee shop, but if they decide to act rude that day, it's on them. You can't really control that, right? There's a lot of parts in life that an average person just can't control. For example, the politics, the weather, uh, other people's actions and also traffic jams. This is one of the basic principles of Stoic philosophy that I very much like, and it's called the dichotomy of control. Musonius Rufus said, we must concern ourselves with things that are under our control and entrust the things that are not to the universe. So if you ever overthink things, just remember to do your best and the rest is really up 
to destiny. That's it. Cool. These were the five ways you can lower your ego that you need to work on long term in order to become coachable slash teachable slash trainable. But what can you do right now to make a change? Don't worry, I got three rapid fire tips for you. The first one is to seek mentorships from people that have the skills or the life that you want to live. The second one is to practice humility. And the third one is to listen twice as much as you speak. There's no explanation for the three of these. Don't overcomplicate them and just constantly focus on practicing them in your daily life and you'll see yourself learning so much and progressing rapidly. We're finished. Hope you found this advice useful. And if you did, comment on what you plan to use the most from this video. By the way, I'm so pumped because tons of you guys have recently subscribed to my newsletter and i'd say that the videos here on youtube are getting so 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 much better so that's cool so yes i hope this inspires the next michael jordan or steve jobs to become coachable and take over the world it might be you you never know thank you for watching see you next monday bye